Mr. Chancellor, it is my honour to present to you Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild, a champion of human rights who has built bridges through athletics, politics and law for more than 40 years. Wilton Littlechild studied physical education. A multi-talented, hard-working athlete, he played football, semi-professional baseball and hockey, and was a member of Team Canada in swimming. All told, he has won more than 70 provincial, regional, national and international championships and features on seven sports walls of fame. After breaking his leg playing hockey, he returned to school and extended his successes far beyond sports. He became the first ever Treaty First Nation person to earn a law degree from the University of Alberta, the first to be appointed to the Queen's Council by Alberta Law Society and later the first to serve in Canada's Parliament. Il fait partie de 150 000 enfants qui ont fréquenté les pensionnats autochtones. Plus tard, il réussira à transformer l'expérience traumatisante qu'il a vécue pendant cette période regrettable de notre histoire en une puissante force porteuse de justice en agissant à titre de commissaire à la Commission de Vérité et Réconciliation du Canada. As a leader in the global Indigenous rights movement, he has been active with the Canadian Council of International Law, the Indigenous Parliament of the Americas, and the United Nations. His work with the UN spans more than three decades and includes contributions to the UN Human Rights Council, the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues and the American Delegation, sorry, the American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Mr. Littlechild is currently serving a three-year term as Grand Chief of the Confederacy of Treaty Six First Nations. He has been an advocate for the benefits of sport. He was a founder of the North American Indigenous Games and of the first ever World Indigenous Nations Games in Brazil in 2015, where he delivered an address on behalf of the United Nations. He continues to actively promote a physical, healthy lifestyle for young people and says his motto, winners don't quit, quitters don't win, is really about pursuing life goals with balance. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honour to present to you Grand Chief Wilton Littlechild so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. I would now like to ask Dr. Littlechild to address the convocation. Ran to temtek nigan kahki okta tam skad na mio sen o motanots kapiak utsogi uskayak. Ex nama gustik, ex ne naskumon. Shevudreya remerasia tus. I want to begin by 
congratulating all of you in my language and also to acknowledge the territory we're on. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class of 2018, and family and friends. Please join me, first of all, in congratulating you, and especially the graduates, the class of 2018. What you commemorate here today has been a team effort. Yes, at times it was not easy, but you persevered, and today we celebrate your success. You are graduating at a time in our country where you are so very, very important. For six and a half years, I was engaged as a commissioner on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. The result of the largest class action lawsuit in Canadian legal history. With a court-ordered mandate, we were tasked to find out what happens to a child when you take them away from their parents and put them in an institution for years. Indeed, what happens to the parents from whom you've taken the children? And what happens to the children who come after? We heard from approximately 7,000 survivors. We heard stories, stories of the most horrific abuse to children, children whose identity was taken, names were changed, hair was cut, a very spiritual assault, traditional clothing were taken. This was a legislated form of assimilation. The Indian residential school story was the darkest, most unknown, saddest chapter in Canadian history. We were asked by the courts to find out what happened. I heard the most horrific, horrific stories of lived experiences, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the cultural abuse, the spiritual abuse, and worst of all, the sexual abuse. I was there too. I was number 65. 65, come here, you dummy. Or 65, pick up that pencil, stupid. 65, why did you do that, you idiot? What happens to the child when you do that to them, when they're little and growing up? The Prime Minister of Canada, when he apologized to the student survivor, stated, great harm was done. The Pope added that he regretted this ever happened and should not have happened. What the courts did not ask us to do was to look into the children that never came home. Those that drowned or froze to death, running away from the schools, running away from the abuse. There's a picture etched in my mind of four little boys huddled together, frozen to death, as they were trying to run away from school. I remember a mother in tears in front of me say, the last thing I remember of my little girl as I was holding on to her, and the Indian agent took one arm, the police took the other one. That's the last time I saw my little girl. Mr. Commissioner, you go find her. Was there anything good in this story, this dark history? Yes, there was. There are those who said, I got an education. I learned a new language. I made new friends that became members of my extended family. For some of us, we found sports, or sports found us, 
as you heard. Sports became a safe haven, a method of survival. There are those who stated, if it wasn't for sports, I would have never made it. I have witnessed since the power of sports to heal. Also now, the power of sport to advance reconciliation. You see, not everyone was bad and not everything was bad. So why is this important? We were ordered by the courts to designate a path to reconciliation. When we did our interim report, we stated that the Indian residential school policy was a direct assault on our children, our languages, our families, our cultures, and our communities. You see, the stated purpose of the Indian residential school policy was to kill the Indian in the child. Given this truth of what happened, how do we restore respectful relationships? What does reconciliation look like? What is reconciliation? I always say that I'm so blessed because I didn't want to do this work, but in retrospect, it has been such a blessing. Last Friday, for example, I had the wonderful opportunity to spend some time with school children, little children, as they were raising a Treaty 6 flag at their school. And thank you for acknowledging the traditional territory you were on. It was a wonderful ceremony, but what made it more special was the location. It was in Wetaskiwin, the city of Wetaskiwin, unfortunately mispronounced. It's a Cree word, Wetaskiwin. Wetaskiwin means having good relations. That's what reconciliation is about. What did I learn? I learned from a coach how to win. I also learned from an elder, my grandfather, how to win in life. I asked, how do you become a Canadian champion? And my coach said, balance. It wasn't until years later that I found out what it meant, that you have to have a foundation and balance four elements of life to win in life. The physical element might be this wall. And the teaching there is to take care of yourself, your body. That wall might be the mental wall, to be disciplined in everything you do. The cultural wall, to be proud of who you are. And most importantly, the one that keeps the other walls up, the spiritual element of life. My grandma used to say, never be afraid to pray. So thankfully, from what I learned to where I am today, this is where you come in. With an education in arts and sciences that we celebrate with you today, you are the new solution. You are graduating in a new era for Canada the next 150 years. I'm so encouraged by what I see happening all across Canada as I visit and witness the change. I see opportunities for us to restore respectful relationships, to build on the strengths of our people. As you may know, the Truth Commission issued 94 calls to action. Graduates of 2018 I challenge you now, tonight, to read the TRC Calls to Action. Pick one that speaks to you and implement it. With your skills and tools that are being recognized here tonight, we need you. Canada needs you. You are so important. So I'll go out now and be the change in Canada. Use your new tools and skills in the arts and sciences to advance reconciliation. 
Thank you, Concordia. Congratulations to all of you. It's a tremendous honor for me to receive this honorary degree from Concordia University. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Dr. Littlechild, I would like to thank you for your wisdom, for your strength, for the example that you have provided, for sharing the history, perhaps some of the darkest moments of Canada. But thank you for showing us the light and a future where reconciliation is possible and is underway. Thank you. <laughs>